I want to start this video with four brief definitions. Nostalgia, a wistful or excessively sentimental yearning for, return to or of some past period or irrecoverable condition. Juvenoia, a term coined by David Finkelhor in 2010, for the fear or hostility directed by an older generation toward a younger one, or toward youth culture in general. Smorgasbord, originally a Swedish word to describe a table of various sandwiches, but in a broader sense, it's used to describe an abundance of something, i.e. a wide variety. And finally, Generation Z, generally defined as people born from 1996 to 2012. Now, I myself was born in 1940, so I fondly remember when my buddies and me, we gathered round the old record player and listened to the very first Big Bopper album. Boy, oh boy, it was swell. And there's been no good music ever since. Just kidding. I was born in 1990, so I'm not Gen Z, I'm a millennial. I'm just old enough to have lived pre-internet, to have experienced that feeling of going to HMV, buying singles on cassette tape, then escalating to buying an album on CD every month, obsessively reading the enemy and Kerrang! for new music recommendations. I remember the mystique a before time when I didn't even necessarily know what a band looked like. And the only images of them you might see were the press shots that appeared in music magazines. And yes, things today are very different, radically different. New music has always represented modernity. Ragtime, jazz, and rock and roll all represented a break with the conventions of the past and a drive towards something new and different. And each was pretty much universally hated by the parents of the kids who loved it when they found out about it, that is. Turn it down! The beauty of music and its history is that each new revolution doesn't need to wipe the slate of what's come before it clean. It doesn't need to undo it and replace it. They exist together in perpetuity, waiting to be discovered and rediscovered. Grunge might have been so potent that it spelled the end of the hair metal era, but that music still exists, waiting for you. Older generations, however, have a recurring habit throughout history of saying things were better in their day, i.e. Nostalgia. It's human nature, and every generation has thought its successes are losing their way. Which also leads me to Juvenoia. In his book Electric Shock, the writer Peter Doggett quotes from the Daily Mirror newspaper from 1926, the 79-year-old music professor listened for a few minutes to a jazz band playing at a furious pace and turned to his nephew declaring, that isn't music, stop it. Then he swayed and fell dead. Yes. There's lots of bad music in the charts, but guess what? There always has been. Yes, older generations felt they had a special connection with a record because of their relative scarcity. But what else was there to do? It's slinky, it's slinky, the favorite of girls and boys. Potato head people look different every time you make them. Just push the flying head back and you're ready for round three. Boy, this is the greatest! We are indeed faced with a proliferation of new forms of entertainment, and yes, that has had an impact on attention spans. There isn't a way to go back. We are living in new and unusual times. It's not the case anymore that a single record is the soundtrack to my life. It's that my life has a soundtrack, a constant one. I can, and do, listen to music every moment. And the accessibility and variety that's become available to me over the last 10 years is unparalleled in any previous time in history. I'm not saying that we haven't lost a special something, a magic and connection to music that Rarity brought. There's unlikely to ever be another band like the Beatles that capture the zeitgeist of the world in quite the same way. Modern genres like drum and bass or grime, while extremely popular, didn't have that same seismic societal effect that rock and roll did because of just how much other noise there is. And that's okay. It's a trade-off I'm willing to accept because what about all the tracks you might have heard once and never found again, or the tracks you never heard in the first place, or the genres you never explored. We're in a post-album world, the age of the song. Forget about the old cycles of recording an album, followed by two years of punishing, dehumanizing touring. The old power of the music industry was in its ability to control the physical distribution of music. You could only buy so many each month and only hear so many records. Who could afford to be a crate digger? My old ways of listening were narrow and close-minded. Now I have a multiplicity of options, or in other words, a smorgasbord. You don't just need to choose one sandwich. You have many, many delicious options in front of you, and you can try them all. Isn't that amazing? 
Gen Z artists can mix and match their favourite genres and influences into new and innovative ways. And it's truly democratic too. The old system was exploitative and broken and gave power to a tiny few. And now something new is emerging and still in the process of doing so. There will be a course correction. It's a very exciting time. The metrics have changed. Sales alone don't reflect what's popular. The media machinery of olden days is just being slow to adjust. But we still have a hunger for music. Touring is up, music licensing is up, video game soundtracks have developed in sophistication and artistry to become stunning works of art in their own right. Metal Gear Solid, Halo, The Last of Us, Final Fantasy, The Grand Theft Auto soundtracks, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Red Dead Redemption, all flawless combinations of oral and visual art. A Guardian article published in September 2022 praised the role games play in helping people discover new music, stating that video games' influence over music discovery is only growing. Between 25 and 30 percent of people now encounter new music through games, and the proportion is higher among Gen Z. Video game soundtracks are some of the most streamed albums on Spotify and have experienced their own vinyl boom. The article quotes Steve Schnur, head of music for EA, about the influence that the soundtrack holds over the music industry. We knew that video games could become what MTV and commercial radio had once been in the 80s and 90s. Any given song in FIFA, whether it's a new track by an established act or the debut of an unknown artist, will be heard around the world nearly one billion times. Clearly no medium in the history of recorded music can deliver such massive and instantaneous global exposure. Technological change is happening so fast and being so disruptive that only fools would make confident predictions about the future of the music industry. Right now, only about 50% of the world is connected to the internet. Just imagine in the next decade when the entire world is connected thanks to 5G. That will inevitably lead to greater demand and consumption of content. That bodes well for all creators, including musicians. You no longer have to be in one particular place like Greenwich Village or Laurel Canyon to make it. AI and blockchain will usher in a new era of artists making the income they deserve from their art. There's going to be competition from other mediums, sure. But competition is a good thing. Artists are creative people who will work out new ways of speaking to people. In my very humble opinion, it's also bizarre to see this animosity towards a younger generation happen in real time. Because just over a decade ago, I was being told that my music taste and listening habits sucked. However, now as I keep broadening my own horizons, I'm excited to take some responsibility in educating all ages and genres and artists they wouldn't usually be exposed to, as my audience ranges from teenagers to 65 and older. And Gen Z... They're knowledgeable, self-aware, socially conscious, and have instant access to all the information in the world. They're making some of the most formally inventive and experimental music of any generation, and they don't need anyone's permission to do so. And they're just getting started. Most are only working on their first record. We haven't yet had the Gen Z Sgt. Pepper equivalent. This is a generation who amuse themselves by being highly creative. There is an artistry to games like Minecraft. New computer tools are going to make creating music simpler and more democratic, and that can only be a good thing. So let's give it a few years. I guarantee you something seismic is coming. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Your attention is much appreciated. If you've not subscribed to my channel, please do click that button. You can also sign up to my infrequent newsletter. Check out the link in the description. And if you're feeling generous, check out my courses and my Patreon page for exclusive content. As always, I'll be seeing you very, very soon.